All right, today let's talk about if you want to do a 3D print and if you only have a model that has a displacement map, how can you kind of reverse engineer that displacement map so it can 3D print? Okay, that might sound kind of confusing, but uh, let me explain. I can see here on this dinosaur that all of the scales are physically modeled and they're sticking up even just a little bit, okay? But let's say if we got a model, let's say maybe purchased one online or something along those lines, and we received a Maya file that looks like this. And I can see that the Maya file does not have all the scales. However, it has a displacement map, which is told to, at render time, show all those scales. Okay, obviously that's the point of the displacement map. And if we look at uh, if I bring up the render here, if I zoom in, I just took off all the textures and stuff. It's kind of hard to see, but I feel like you can kind of see these scales are sticking up. And they're sticking up even though the geometry isn't like this. So if we would print this model right now, this model would not have any of the scales. So, and the only thing that we have for this model, um, let's say once again that we purchased it, is files like this. Okay, displacement map, color maps, specular maps, you know, things that we can kind of plug in to a material. Uh, so how do we kind of extract that data from this displacement? That's what I'm going to be looking at. Um, so before I do that, let's kind of talk about what a displacement is. So a displacement is basically like a black and white map that gives special instructions at render time on how to process this. So in Maya, if I go to material attributes, I can see that there's an AI standard surface on this character. And if I would scroll through all of this, I would not see anything about displacement, okay? That's because if I click on this file, this brings me to the shader group, and I can see that the displacement map is on this area here. And if I click on this, there's my displacement texture, color space set to raw, and so it's on there. Um, the other thing that is necessary when rendering a displacement map is on the shape tab in the attribute editor. If I go down here to Arnold, scroll down, um, the, yeah, for this to render properly, this would have to be set to Cat Clark. It would have to be told how many divisions it has, and then, um, then it can properly displace that. So what it's doing is it's kind of like subdividing the mesh at render time to produce the result. Okay, I know that sounds kind of technical, but let's take a look at this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate this mesh here, and I'm going to go Control D, and maybe just kind of bring this over. And actually, I think what I'll do, um, and if it's locked, uh, most likely if something's rigged, you might have to unlock it here. Um, I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to select the eyeballs. Well, let me do this. I'm going to select the eyes and this. Control G to group it. Control D to duplicate it. And I'm going to kind of move this over. Okay. Um, now I could affect this one, but I feel like just so we can kind of compare here. Uh, so now I've got this other dinosaur that I'm going to kind of work on. And once again, if I printed it, obviously the printer is not going to see any of those scales. So what I want to do is I want to, um, if I go to material attributes, I'm going to make sure that this guy does have the displacement on. And if I go here, yes, he has the displacement. And if I go to the shape tab, I can see that it, he's got iterations and all this stuff. So I'm going to actually divide this guy physically. So if I go to Mesh Smooth, that's actually what's happening at render time. Okay, it's told to smooth. And if I go to Mesh Smooth again, now it's going to smooth another time. And then I'll go to Mesh Smooth again. And what I'm doing is I'm dividing it up dense enough that when it calculates the displacement map, it'll actually kind of be able to push the geometry around and create actual scales. Um, once again, kind of the reverse process of, 
of really what we're supposed to do. Um, but I feel like because we're trying to get the displacement out of it, that's what we need to do. Then what I can do is I can go to modify, convert, and then I can go to displacement to polygons. Okay. Now I would click on that button and I did this and it took about uh, 10 minutes. Okay. So it's like one of those cooking shows. I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's done. So I'm going to go file, open scene. And here's the dis, uh, yeah, displacement mesh. Let me open this up. And um, once again, I converted it, but just to save some time, so you don't have to kind of watch this wheel spin, I'm just gonna open up the final um, product, and then you'll see what that looks like. Okay, so now I can see that I extracted that displacement map to the geometry. Okay, once again, uh, modify, convert, displacement to polygons. And as long as that was dense enough, it could hold that. So now that's something that could be printed. So, and you can see how dense it is. And I just went to File, Export Selection, and then I saved it as um, OBJ High Poly Dinosaur. And you can see that it's huge. Um, in this case, it's eight gigs. Um, you know, yours probably won't even be that, that big. I feel like I divided mine a little bit too much. But um, now what I can do is if I bring that into ZBrush, and um, this is what it would be, okay? Um, so I just went to import, and I grabbed the um, high poly dinosaur, and now here he is. Um, I can see that he's 18.3 million polys, weighing in at eight gig or seven gigs, okay? I'm guessing that's probably gonna be way too big for any 3D printer to handle, um, file size wise. So what I want to do is I want to make this a much smaller file size. The way that I do that is I'm going to go and um, go up here to Z plugin and I'm going to go to the decimation master. I'm going to hit pre-process current and I'm not actually going to do that because that, once again, it, this was such a big file, it took about 10 minutes for it to kind of think about what it wanted to do. Once it's done processing though, I just simply click clicked on this 150k button and what it did is it gave me this result okay basically an identical looking dinosaur but I can see that instead of um, you know 18 million polys he's now only hundred and fifty thousand polys and if I look at this uh, this is what his topology looks like so kind of bizarre but once again for 3d printing that's okay now if I wanted to send that to the 3D printer, um, realize that there is a 3D print hub exporter and I could export as um, an STL or an OBJ. So if, I, if you need different things here and also the size, you can determine the size here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and go like this and I'm gonna export this as OBJ decimated. And then we'll just take a look at the size difference there. So if I look at this, I can see that the high poly dinosaur was eight gigs, and now we have a decimated one that looks exactly the same. That's only 11 megabits. So uh, for sh surely, you know, any printer could handle that. So, you know, hopefully that was helpful, kind of this reverse workflow of, hey, you only have a displacement map, um, and you want to kind of extract that displacement map to geometry, so then you could do it for 3D printing. So once again, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions below. Thank you.